Hello everyone, and welcome back to Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. Previously, Apollo and Trucy explored further backstage and discovered a remote trigger hidden in the piano that Maki Tobai was playing. And the trigger corresponded to this weird circuit board with a lighter attached that starts a fire. So it seems very likely to me that someone planted it inside the piano so that when Maki would hit a specific key, Chris, uh, Clavier Cavins, uh, guitar would light on fire. Yeah, that guitar that you can see on screen now. And anyway, on the way out, we saw Darian, um, Darian Crescent, and he seems very eager to get back in there. I think to tamper with evidence, because right now, um, Darian is my number one suspect in this murder. I think that Romain Lutus, the Interpol agent, was investigating him, and Latus becoming Lemire's bodyguard was just to get to the Gaviners. Because after all, Romain Latus only became the manager recently, right? And it was only recently that the Gaviners extended an invitation to Lemire. The timing just seems weird to me. Anyway, let's have a quick look around. That was an impressive bit of pyrotechnics that did this. That's a guitar from the concert, isn't it? I thought it was one of the staff playing a gag on me. I never guessed that wasn't the end of it. I had a specialist analyze the guitar, incidentally. Oh? Did he find anything out? He didn't have a lot of time, so it's still unclear. But the results he came up with were intriguing. Intriguing? How does a guitar tie into everything that went on? Sounds like something we should ask about. My thoughts exactly. And what's this incubating egg? What's that on the plate there? Is that gum? Gum? Maybe he was chewing it when the phone rang. So he put it on the plate for later consumption. You think a rock star could afford a fresh stick? Don't jump to any conclusions now. That's no chewing gum. Take a closer look. Although I really shouldn't be offering, should I? What the hell is that? It looks like a lump of plastic? Is that like a 3D model of a thumbprint or something? Wait, that phone call. Yeah, so that's why I'm asking, what is this creepy thing, object, whatever? Looks like Prosecutor Gavin is on the phone. What? A replica? So why was he after it in the first place? Yeah, Latouse. Prosecutor Gavin, does this have something to do with Mr. Latouse? Wait a second. You were listening to my phone call, weren't you? Who? Us? Uh, I tried to stop him, really, but he forced me to. Drusy! <laughs> you sell out? <laughs> hey, you were the one digging for a scandal, Miss Reporter. <sighs> oh, typo! To tell the truth, I'm not even sure what it is. But apparently it's a model of something undercover agent Mr. Latouse was after. This... lump? Would you mind telling us what you do know about it? Oh, maybe that's another dialogue option. What's wrong, Apollo? You look confused. I was just wondering where the work chair in this office was. You're looking at my favorite chair right now. That's a massage chair, isn't it? That is an ergonomic... Oh, I couldn't read that in time. I love the ones with the vibrating rollers on your back. Those feel great. Did I say something wrong? 
No, I merely realized the futility of an explanation. Oh, it's probably more advanced than that. <laughs> wow, look at that stereo! To me, a life without music is inconceivable. I never turn down the volume, even when I'm working on a case. That's such a huge speaker! It must be really loud! This room is completely soundproof, of course. Really? At my place, I can hear when the neighbors turn their VCR on to record something. Didn't this game come out in the late 2000s? VCR? I, I would think DVDs were completely replaced uh, by... Um, the DVDs completely replaced them by now. Maybe you can get Mr. Wright to talk to them, work something out? And lately, we've been getting complaints about Apollo's voice training. Maybe I'll go have a word with Mr. Wright, too. Wait, so has Apollo been living at the Wright Agency? Hmm. Look at all- oh, look at all the guitars! Why so many? You can never have too many guitars. They're like... my lovers. I didn't just hear him say that. They're backup guitars, Apollo. Don't you know anything? Rock and rollers always smash the guitars at the end of a show. No wonder it's so hard to make it as a musician. You know what? You should try rocking a little, Apollo. And breaking his guitars while he watches? That might be a little too rocking. <laughs> of course I would never do such a thing. Did I not say they're like my lovers? Do I seem like the kind of man who would do such a thing to ones he loves? No, no, not at all. I mean, you're Mr. Gavin, upstanding prosecutor. What happened to Prosecutor Gavin, God of Rock? Okay. Uh, maybe the window or the monitor? This display shows all the evidence for the case. Look, Apollo, he's got three televisions. Hey, don't look at those too closely. I'm still sorting out all the details. Each monitor shows evidence for a different case. He does them all at once? I wish I had three TVs. What could you possibly do with three television sets? I may look laid back and relaxed, but in reality, I'm quite busy, you know. I'm living life at turbo speed, doing magic, going to school, investigating cases. Oh my god, she would go to school. I didn't even think about that. But... But if I had three big TVs... I could watch a magic video, do my homework, and catch a crime drama all at once! The first two seem useful, I suppose. Right, let's have a chat. Ah, that reminds me. Did you see the paper today? Yes! I always read the TV section. Good girl. How about you, Air Forehead? I read the funnies. I knew it. But then you will not have seen this. Concert of Tragedy, the prosecutor's deadly song? Oh, is that a new show? I haven't heard about that one. It's not a show. It's an article. News, you know. Oh, does this have anything to do with the case? Since getting back from the trial, my phone has been ringing off the hook. How does it feel to take a man's life with a song? Have you ever hummed a man all the way to death row? Do you think you could sing for me over the phone? It is endless. Endless! Thanks to the case you made today, of course. Oh, that was all Apollo's idea. Hey! Huh? Is that a newspaper over there, too? Ah, yes, the Virginian Daily Bugle. Go ahead, take a look. Um, thanks, but I can't read Virginian. That's a pretty uh, font on the top left. Hmm. So Romain Latusa's obituary is in there. Oh, that's right. Suffice it to say, this is big news over there as well. 
though they didn't go so far as to mention the lyrics to my song. Probably no one in Virginia could believe it. It's probably seen as just a theory at this point. Their journalist didn't see the need to mention it. That makes sense. I hardly know what to think of it myself. Well, maybe we can show this to Maki and get him to read it. Lemira's testimony will probably be in the evening edition, I'd imagine. Which is why I've had Dar a Darian step down from the investigation for now. Yeah, we ran into him moping in front of the Coliseum. Lemira was my invited guest, so it was... It is a rather delicate in situation. You understand how much I want to solve this case. Quickly, if possible. I really love that song. It has such a great atmosphere to it. You you co-wrote it with Lemira, if I remember correctly? That's right. It was last year. I had gone to tour Virginia's legal system, as a matter of fact. And that's when you heard Lemira's voice. It was at a small jazz club. I wept that night. I knew I had to meet her, to talk with her. So I used my influence, which is not inconsiderable, to arrange a meeting. Wow, prosecutors really have a lot of clout. I think he's sort of a special case, Trucy. Thankfully, she liked the work I did, and we wrote a song right there, backstage. Maki on piano, that dulcet voice and myself on a guitar that I borrowed from the mirror. And music history was made. Probably not an experience your average lawyer could ever have, like Apollo, say. It is a memory I hold dear, and the song we wrote that night was this. And that very guitar is right over there. You mean this charred lump? Don't call it a lump, that's a piece of history. And it's only browned, not really charred. No matter. I shall never sing that song again. I wouldn't have used that guitar again either, even if I could have. What happened during that song, anyway? Why did his guitar suddenly catch on fire? Do you think you could show it to us? Your charred, I mean, slightly burned guitar? I'm sure he doesn't mind. What more could happen to it? Hum. So the song was written at their first meeting. And Maki was there. That said, I'm pretty sure that at some point, Darian could still learn the lyrics. So I don't think this changes my theory that he's the, the culprit. It was a beautiful instrument. It was played lovingly for many years. The guitar befitting a woman like Lemire. How did it end up here? She gave it to me. I mentioned how much I enjoyed playing it that night, and she made a present of it. So this guitar is from Virginia? That it is. We couldn't carry it on the plane. Changes in air pressure and humidity ruined the wood. So we vacuum packed it in Lemira studio. I used a special shipping service available to me for transporting evidence. They brought it right up to my office for me. Pristine and untouched. So, this is the game telling you point blank that the, uh, that the, um, the meddling, the tampering could not have happened a year ago. See, prosecutors do have a lot of clout. Um, I still think he's a special case. Such a valuable guitar. It's too bad it got burned. What was it that you were saying earlier? Something about 
intriguing results from an examination of the guitar? That's right! What was that all about? Well, you know how guitars have a round hole in the front? It is called the sound hole. Ah, so that's what it's called. Well, I found something attached to the wood just inside the hole. A broken device of some sort. A broken... device? Yes. This, in fact. A second one? The examiner is busy with evidence for the case now, however. So he'll be checking this out once he's finished with everything else. Um... Odd. That device looks strangely familiar. What in the world was the second thing that was supposed to catch fire? The one we found was stuffed inside the couch. Was the intention to set fire to the room that Latus died in to burn up evidence? What the hell? But looking at the diagram... Uh, wherever it was triggered... It... Okay, so the device couldn't have been inside the piano because Maki's piano was in range for the dressing room. So it set fire to the guitar, which was elevated above the stage, but wasn't far enough to reach the dressing rooms. Which means it probably came from the left, like near that drum set. Which might be where... Darian was standing. But no, wait. The fire started in the middle of the second set. Latus was shot and killed during the third set. No, the timeline wouldn't match up for that theory, so disregard what I just said. Oh man, this is weird and interesting. Anyway, let's look at this guitar. There's slightly scorched, and then there's this. It's burned clean through. Yep, it's pretty much a useless piece of junk. It's kind of like you after a trial, Apollo. Wow. Wow. Which part, the burned clean through or useless piece of junk? Wow. Rude. So rude. Don't really see anything else of note. Alright, so about that strange lump. This was found in Mr. Latusa's bag. It's apparently a replica of something. A replica? It's a small lump, about an inch and a half long. Oh yeah, that's a, like a fingerprint. We analyzed it, but there's not much to say other than it's a lump of plastic. Perhaps it was used to be the in, in the identification of whatever it is a replica of. You mean, whatever Mr. Latus was after? That seems to be the most logical explanation. Well, well, what is it? Don't ask me, Frau Fräulein. Oh? If you don't want to tell us, you could just say so. I've put in a request to Interpol via my contacts in Virginia. But apparently there is a block on information somewhere along the chain. Oh? Something Interpol doesn't want to tell Virginia. Something about this little piece of plastic. Mr. Latus went through all that trouble to become Lemire's manager. Just to come to this country to find out more about this lump? And he died for it. That's suspicious as hell. 
I've sent someone to the Colosseum to fetch the mirror. Perhaps she knows something about it, being a Borginian. Very interesting. Let's have a look. It's like a rainbow. It's like oily. Like the oily imprint of a finger, perhaps? What? Oh, sample. Sample, huh? Okay, put it in a big enough la label on it. Maybe it's to keep people from eating it by mistake? Yes, they might think it was an otherwise tasty white lump of plastic. Maybe it's the manufacturer? Sample toys and you can't afford the real thing. Sounds like a company Mr. Wright would like. Okay, so maybe that's not a thumbprint. No. If it was, the rings would only be on one side. So what the hell is it? I am well and truly baffled. My apologies, but there's no way I'm going to talk details about the case with you. If I want to get my attention, bring you something dramatic. Okay, I'll give you something dramatic. It has to be one of these. What is it, Apollo? That device that was found in your guitar. Take a look at this. Why, that looks like the same thing. What is it? It's an igniter. Uh, another one? It was at the crime scene, in Lemure's dressing room. Detective Sky found it, actually. At the scene of the crime. What could that mean, I wonder? I believe that covers everything I'm at liberty to talk to you about. Oh. Thanks for dropping by, Air Forehead. Uh, thanks? Why, you gave me so much information. That igniter, for instance. Oh, that. I've never met an attorney so forthcoming with the prosecution. It's a big help. Or perhaps you're just a tad naive, hmm? Yeah, I was thinking this would be a bad idea. I guess I could have hit it, but somehow showing it felt like the right thing. I could say the same to you, Prosecutor Gavin. Thanks for the information. About the, er, strange lump of plastic. The one that Mr. Latouse was investigating. Hey, that's right! I've been thinking, Air Forehead. We encounter many incidents in our lives, all of us. Not all of them simple. Especially not the ones where people are killing to song lyrics. And that's why I try to at least remain simple inside. And I keep a simple goal. To discover the truth. That's why I like to keep relations civil, yeah? That is all. I can live with that. Um, Mr. Prosecutor? Fräulein? Can I ask you why you sing in a band? Ah... Uh, because I want women to turn and look when I walk down the street. That's pretty simple, too. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got work to do. Another time, perhaps. Sure, fair enough. Let's move on. Um... They said the little mirror would go be collected, but I hope we can show that lump to her. Oh, it's you. You came at a good time. Uh, hello there, Emma. What's up? Either of you know where Lemira is? Um, well, I saw her in the backstage hallway a while ago. Yeah, that's strange. What's strange? I can't find her anywhere. I'm supposed to bring her to the prosecutor's office. Oh, I was going to say, oh, it's no worry. Gavin sent someone. But if it was supposed to be you, that's trouble. Lemire's missing? 
It's hard to imagine her wandering off somewhere on her own. Being that she's blind and all. Yeah, we'll help you look for her. Great, thanks. Ooh. Let's get in there. This place is deserted. I wonder where Lemira went off to. I'm sure she's okay on her own. She seems resourceful. I guess, but I can't help worry about her a little. The crime scene? No. Perhaps... The governor's room. No. Perhaps the stage? It's getting late in the evening. Uh-huh. The stage is pitch dark. The power breaker must be off for this section. Great. I'll go get someone. What's different? Yipes, it was really dark out there. Dark? That's all Lemira has when you think about it. What would it be like to live in a world of darkness? Well, blind people don't see the dark. They see nothingness. They don't see. That's the point. Hey, Apollo? Uh-huh, what? Doesn't something about this stage seem different to you? Like something's changed? Is the guitar case closed? Changed? I can't put my finger on it, but it's bugging me. Now it's bugging me too. What's she talking about? I think it's a red guitar case. I don't remember that. Hey, that case! Wasn't that open before? Bingo. Huh. I guess someone closed it. Wait. Look, where the case closes... Something's sticking out. That doesn't look like an instrument. I don't think it's... Let's open it, Apollo! Oh, jeez. Emma! We have to get Emma! Lemira was taken directly to the hospital. Emma ran around, barking orders, making phone calls. Trucy just clung to my arm and cried. And me, I was still in shock. Two bodies in two days is too, too many. Well, god damn. Oh great, the Hickfield Clinic. Emma, how's Lemira? Is she okay? Ah, you. Uh, we all owe you a big thanks, that's for sure. So, she's okay? Yes. She came to a, she came to a short while ago. You found her before it was too late. Th that's good to hear. So, what happened? Someone attacked her. She was struck on the forehead. By who? We don't know. But they hit her on the forehead, right? That's right in front of her. How could she not see- Oh. Right. Would you like to see her now? Is that alright? She wants to thank you for saving her life. Damn, so she, she would just be left to asphyxiate, huh? A mirror! Ah, oh, Mr. Attorney. You were the one who found me? Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I'm just glad you're okay. Tell me, what happened? Holy crap. Ugh. Um, 
Right. Let's have a look around. A nurse watches, hawk-like, from the reception desk. She glares at me whenever I talk. Maybe my voice carries? <laughs> that must be a recovering patient. He, he keeps staring at us. Yeah, because you're all cartoon characters. What's so unusual about an attorney and a magician? <laughs> Some visitors are here in the waiting room, watching TV. Murder during a concert at Sunshine Coliseum. Ah, huh, looks like we're on the news. With his current hit song, Guilty Love, is in the courtroom as prosecutor. Seating the defendant all the way to death row. Prosecutor Gavin this, Prosecutor Gavin that. Where's my 15 minutes? The Guitar Serenade on sale now. Wow. That's, that's the worst. It was after I spoke with you in front of the dressing room. I sensed someone approaching. I thought it might be someone come to see me, but they said nothing. When I went to return to my dressing room... You were hit? I knew. That very moment, I knew. The assailant was trying to kill me. Ack! It was lucky for me the first blow did not knock me out. I turned and ran for the stage. Someone was chasing me, I could hear footsteps. Yet I reached the stage first. Why the stage? I had overheard maintenance people talking. The power to the stage area was off, they said, for electrical work. Ah! Darkness is my ally. There was a contrabass case near the stage. That is where I hid. Oh. So the assailant couldn't see you. Once in the case, I'm afraid I passed out. Wow, that sounds like a really close call. Something about that's fishy. How could she know the contrabass case was there? Uh. Do you have any idea who it might have been? Unfortunately, no. Whoever it was, they said not a word. Too bad. Yet, when I consider that I was struck high on the forehead, I must conclude that whoever hit me was taller than I am. Good point. She's sharp. And you're much taller than I am. You're about as tall as Apollo. So that means it was likely an adult and probably a man. Isn't Apollo 22? That's an adult. Could it be him? But why would anyone attack you, Lemire? The detective asked me this, too. And to her, I gave the same answer I give you. I do not know. Huh. Odds of Darien being the murderer are increasing. No, not move. Present. So, did you know you were in the news? I'm sorry, I'm not quite recovered from the attack. Mm hmm. Okay, well you gotta tell me something about the replica. Ah, uh, Lemure, I wanted to ask you about this. Do you know what this is? This? This is what? Mr. Latouse was carrying it. It's a replica of the thing he was after. He was... after? You know, in his secret identity? As an undercover agent. So that's what he was doing. Y you mean, you know what? Yes, I know, of course. This must be... A Virginian cocoon. Or rather, a convincing replica thereof. 
Why haven't I heard of a Virginia in a cocoon before? Why would he be carrying this around? Was it some kind of souvenir? I wonder. Let's have a chat about this. Well, they call it Borginian. It must only be found in Borginia. For certain, all in Borginia know of these. It's a cocoon, so do you get silk from it? I do not know the details, I am sorry to say. I thought she said all in Borginia knew of these. There is one fact I do know about the cocoon, though. Something all in Borginia know. What's that? The cocoons. They are not to be taken out of the country. If someone does, and is caught, they will be put to death. Huh. To, 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 to death? Why? I do not know. Yet, if Interpol was involved, I'm sure there is a good reason. But this is just a piece of plastic. He was carrying a replica, but looking for the real deal. Did Darian take a real one with him? That's my best guess. So, that's what he was up to? Tracking down Virginian cocoon smuggling. Smuggling? It seems I was marked. Marked? Life changed for me with the popularity of my songs. I began to travel around the world. Ah! So you could have brought those Virginian cocoons with you? On my trips, yes. That was probably the suspicion. And Mr. Latouse was placed as an undercover agent to look into it. Virginia is a small, sheltered country. Not many of our people venture into the world outside. Is that the why they suspected you? But Mr. Latouse wasn't a Virginian, was he? He was an Interpol agent, which means... Why, Apollo? Well, there must have been some reason other countries didn't want the cocoons out. Something scary enough to get Interpol involved. Huh? Like what? How could such a tiny ball of thread cause such commotion? Cocoon smuggling. And Mr. Latouse had Lemire marked. Hmm. It couldn't be her. Huh? There's one other person I need to talk to. Thank you for talking to us, Lemira. It was the least I could do. Actually, I have another request. If it is within my power... I need an interpreter. Someone who speaks Virginian. Apollo? Would you come with us, if you're well enough? I see. Yes, of course. I shall accompany you. Huh? Where are we going? Come on, Trucy. We're about to get to the bottom of this. Yeah! Maki, we came to talk to you about the case. Maki... Could you interpret for us, Lemira? Yes. Maki, I'd like to talk to you about when we first met. When we still thought you were blind. Now we know the truth. He did go out on his own, alone, didn't he? You can see, right? I was completely fooled myself. Maki, isn't there another secret you're hiding from us? Oh. If Maki was 
smuggling the cocoons and selling them here in the <clears throat> States, wouldn't that mean he can speak English? Wait, Mr. Attorney? What do you mean by secret? What do I mean by secret? Well... If I'm not mistaken, you know something about this, don't you? Hey! You got a reaction, a big one! Maki, you didn't... Trucy and I are trained to see people's uncertainty. Not that we would have needed any training to see that one. Mr. Attorney, please tell me what this is all about. Lemira, please interpret. Very well. I know you know something about this by your reaction. If you won't tell me, I might have to give it to the prosecution. And have them look into it. He asks you to wait, do not be so hasty. M Maki? Do you know everything? Yes, everything. Well, sort of. Have him tell us about it. Very well. Ho <laughs> ho Okay. Um, first things first, I think I want to present the newspaper. See if it has anything to say about it. Maki, he is upset he could not speak with you. Well, let's hear him out before he gets grumpy, Apollo. Okay, it's probably just strictly speaking. What is this cocoon, anyway? The cocoon, the silk, is a potent cure. A cure? It must cure some disease. It's a The situation is so grave and serious, and then it just hits me over the head with a pun like that. Oh, that's a sucker punch to the kidney. Christ! It's a cure for incuritis. Okay. A cure for incuritis? <sighs> but if it's a cure, why keep it in Virginia like that? Just think of all the lives it could save by sharing the medicine. I do not understand the reasons myself. Okay, well, at least we know what it is. A cure. And Mr. Latouse was after cocoon smugglers. What kind of dystopia does this world represent if you have to smuggle medicine? Good lord. Wait, was Maki? Maki, you weren't. He couldn't be a smuggler, he's so little. Well, you're only 15. You're sort of ma a magician, aren't you? Well, that's true. I am sort of ma of a magician. She said sort of. Oh, to have a copy of that security camera tape. Well, Maki, are you a smuggler? He won't tell me. First he plays blind, now he plays dumb. I wonder. 
Do you think he brought a cocoon here to sell it to someone? If Maki really did bring one into the country, was he planning on making a deal for its sale? I can't go home. I can't go home! I can't go home to Virginia. I do not want to go home. The penalty for taking a cocoon from Virginia is death. That's right. It's punishable by death. About the case? What about the case? He wants to tell us about Mr. Latusa's death? This meeting's over? You. Darian? W what do you mean? Visiting hours aren't over yet. There's a call for Maki from the Virginian Embassy. This meeting is over. Sorry. Just give us five more minutes. We can call them back after that. Sorry, no go. Come on, piano boy, we're leaving. Darian, wait! I never liked you. Either of you. Huh? Darn it, we were so close! He was about to tell us! Hey, Apollo? He didn't want us to hear what Maki had to say. I mean, if it was super important, Maki could have just yelled it out as he was leaving. Apollo? There can be only one reason why. Why is everyone ignoring me? Oh, sorry. This is it. I know who I'm after now. It all happens tomorrow. In court. To be continued. Oh, I'm hyped. Man, I wonder if we're going to cross-examine Valent. That'd be pretty interesting. Well, this is it. Today's the day it all goes down. And then there was yesterday. This meeting is over. Sorry. Just give us five more minutes. We can call them back after that. Sorry, no go. Come on, piano boy, we're leaving. Darian, wait! I never liked you. Either of you. Uh-huh. I suppose these flashbacks are useless, uh, I mean, are useful for people who actually do save and quit at those intermission points. And I think I know why. Time to bring down a little justice. The frick? What's that? He is heard but unseen. Who's that talking? Valent Grammary? Using the door like an average muggle, no less? Oh. That hasn't aged well. That would have been funny many years ago, but now it's not. Now, now any mention of Harry Potter just makes me really sad. You aren't the witness today, are you, Uncle Valent? <laughs> A preposterous proposition. How could I stand to stand upon the stand? Why, my secrets would be free for the plucking. I might even have to sign autographs. That is why I intend to remain hidden for the entire day. Ooh, with vanishing magic? Indeed. I will jump upon an express train and express myself to the next town over. But before I go, a word of warning. Warning? What? A grand grammary glamour resides at the root of all that has happened. Do not forget this truth. A... glamour? A spell, a sorcery, a great illusion. Miss Trucy, though it pains, us, pains me to part so, 
I need to get in line for a ticket. Farewell! And there he goes. He sure seemed happy about that illusion thing. Oh, big illusions are the bread and butter of a magician. You can't pull off a show without one. The big illusion is always a spe spectacle to remember. Usually it involves... Oh, I couldn't read that in time. Ah, oh, such a problem. Th this game wasn't made for reading everything out loud. Or the Eiffel Tower. Anything really... Okay, now I really want to know what she said. So, he was talking about what we saw at the concert. Well, Mirror's disappearing act. And Prosecutor Gavin's exploding guitar. I wonder what he meant by being at the root of all that has happened. Well, it's about time. Shall we go? Ah, excuse me, sir. Uh, yes? The scheduled starting time for the trial has been changed. The trial will not be commencing until 10.30 a.m. Sorry for the inconvenience. Uh-huh. Did something happen? This is a first. It was by the judge's request. Some urgent personal business. Oh, his sick grandson? Great. I bet he stayed up too late last night watching courtroom dramas. Apollo, you shall be ashamed of your words and deeds. Apparently he's visiting the hospital again. The hospital? I believe it was mentioned that the Chief Justice's son is unwell. Oh, the Chief Justice's son, not his grandson. Apparently his condition worsened considerably this morning. The Chief Justice's son? Son of a bitch. Incuritis! The sick son was the Chekhov's gun all along! Ah! <laughs> Ooh, that is good. Apollo Justice, I see what you're doing. I see it, and I likes it. Mm. Oh, that's right. Remember yesterday morning the judge said he had to go visit him after the trial? There's an article about it in the newspaper. If you care to read about it yourself. Incuritis. Where have I heard that before? First case in country? Oh. Hope it's not... I hope it's not... Um... Really hope it's not contagious. I'll let you read that article for us, Apollo. Just leave the TV Guide page to me. Try not to lose a page with the funnies if you can. Well, 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 well. Ahem. My apologies for the delay. I think this is the best spot to end things. <laughs> oh man. I can see how this is all going to end tied up in a neat little bow. For indeed, if there is a real, actual, genuine Virginian cocoon here in the States, um, we gotta know, you gotta know where that's going, but, God, all I can think about is this existential capitalistic nightmare where this life-saving medicine is forbidden from leaving a country just because the materials to make that medicine only come from that country? Oh man. It's almost as nightmarish as charging hundreds of dollars for a drug that costs merely cents to make, like insulin. Gosh, I'm sure glad that that's not the case or anything. Oh man, I'm glad we don't live in a nightmare world like that. Wowee. Oh, I made myself sad. Um, um, um. As for solving this case itself, 
I still don't have any concrete ways to get from point A to point B. I have a lot, and I mean a lot of dots, but I don't know how to connect them. This is going to be one of those cases where I kind of just have to go along and see what I can do in the moment. I don't really have a plan, but I am still thinking about that brooch. It was there before Lemire flew across the stage, then gone after she reappeared. Unless my eyes are playing tricks on me. Hmm. Ah, this is fun. So. I do think we'll finish case 3 here in just a few more videos. Then after that will be case 4. Um if I might make a prediction, I think case 4 might be just one brief trial section showing the events from 9 7 years ago ish where Phoenix Wright got disbarred. We showed fake evidence in court and got his license taken away? I think we might see that in action. And in fact, that might... That might be related to the disappearance of Zach Grammary, Trucy's uh, biological father. That would be so juicy if that was the case. And then I think once that's done, there, there might be a fifth case, which is going to be full length and definitely the last one. So that's my prediction for how the structure of this game will turn out. It's kind of weird to think that we're well over halfway through the game. <laughs> I'm so used to the titanic, colossal size of the Phoenix Wright trilogy that it feels surreal. It feels like we just began. But thankfully I still have plenty more Ace Attorney games to play after this, so... Yeah. Anyway, I'm Zephyr the Jester. This has been more Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you next time. So until then, please take care.